stood in the ancient borough of Kirkcaldy, one of the many boroughs that helped to transform Scotland. We now move to St Andrews, one of the first boroughs to be established. The urban world had a lot of to change during the reign of King David I. David made all this possible by granting special rights to towns across the country. Genau. These were enshrined in charters, each bearing the royal seal. Trade and prosperity blossomed, and the landscape changed. Where once had been villages and small markets, there now grew towns and business centers with links across the world. Over the next 500 years, Permission was given to create almost 200 boroughs, the most powerful being the royal boroughs, followed by the ecclesiastical and baronial. The royal boroughs traded internationally. Perth had links with the Low Countries and the Baltic nations. We know foreign merchants made regular visits to the town. The secrets of the boroughs have quite literally been unearthed by diligent archaeologists. Successive phases of urban development since 1970 have offered them the chance to dig for evidence of the buildings and lifestyles enjoyed by our forebears. This Peter Miller case depicts the story of Tristan and Isolde and shows us that the Anglo-French culture of romance was popular in medieval Scotland at the time. This silk hairnet was probably made in Spain and is a rare find in Britain, highlighting the extent of trade and prosperity in the boroughs. Battle padlocks made from iron are more common. They could have been used to secure buildings or trunks and caskets and show the need to guard against crime in medieval towns. The privileges of belonging to a borough created the opportunity for new trade organizations or incorporations to be formed. I'm a tanner, and that's a pretty messy job. Preparing skins that are to be turned into leather. Everything stinks. It can take months to make a good leather, but trade has been good. Mind you, some of the Flemish leather work coming into the market recently is of a quality that has been bad to. A member of the Hammer Mountain Corporation. We make anything in metal, and our workshops are usually some of the noisiest parts of the world. We Hammermen are proud of our trade, and we have a strong incorporation behind us. I'm a nail wife, and I run a tavern. I think women are better than men at the game. And in any case, we're not allowed to join men in these incorporations. I think, mind, the money's good. I'm a Baxter, and that means making bread all day. It can be hot and dusty at times, but at least we're not banned from working inside the borough, like Potters. Their kilns are just too much for fires. As the years passed, the boroughs grew. Most locations turned out to share common features. A wide high street, a trough or weighing device, and market cross and narrow venals, or side streets, that lead into special areas of trade. Scotland today is internationally recognised as an industrious and thriving nation, a far cry from life in the Middle Ages, perhaps. But look closer, and you'll see Scotland's medieval roots in the distinctive names and town layouts of the modern boroughs.